<laughs> what a glorious morning to be out here and heading down to... Ah, <laughs> oh, I forgot about this. Uh, I'm out today, uh, commissioned to shoot quite a few locations along Northern Ireland's stunning Causeway Coast. This is Kenbean Head and it's closed and it's going to be closed for I think the next six months. Um, so much so they've put up this massive security barrier. It's actually an area of the country I haven't actually filmed in that much. Um, I mean, it's a really obvious one. You'd think I would have been up here a lot with the drone, but I really haven't, and I've avoided it because it's the most touristy area, so it tends to be very, very busy. And it's an area that people have been familiar with. I've been more about showing off areas that people are less familiar with, but finally have a chance, finally have an excuse to go around and show off this beautiful part of the coast. So uh, not sure what's gonna happen today. I'm just going around a few places, trying to get some shots. Uh, this will be one of about several days doing this. So bring you along with me. But I'm getting back in the car because it looks sunny, but it's absolutely freezing and I can't feel my fingers anymore. Oh, oh we're going to a graveyard next. This is not my day. I just got to the, the graveyard. It's like the old friary in Bally Castle. And it's closed because they're fixing it up. I think the Causeway Coast <laughs> Council have just decided now that everything's shut at the minute to just fix everything at once. Okay. I've made up my mind. I'm going to head around to Dunseverick. It's off the beaten track a little bit more. Uh, and even if it's closed, it's the start of a really amazing coastal cliff walk. So if I get around there and I can't film for some reason, I'm just going to go do a hike around the cliffs because that's always fun. So let's go. Great if I could remember how to use a gate. And there it is, Dunseverick Castle. I personally don't get the attraction with Dunseverick Castle. There's, you know, almost nothing left of it, but it's still like a popular spot on the tourist trail. I mean, literally, it's barely four walls of this tiny castle are left. Although I guess the thing about Dunseverick Castle is while the castle itself is pretty boring, the landscape around it is unbelievable. There it is. If you want to actually get down to the castle itself, you have to sort of Make your way down here under this squishy, squishy ground and then climb up beside it. Look at this. You would barely, well, you'd almost miss this, but you got the rock. And if you look closely, all of a sudden you can see these. Look, it's been mortared. That's part of the old castle wall. Yeah, and it's the same over here. So back when the castle was in one piece, that maybe was the, would have been the way in. I've no idea. I'm not an archaeologist. What's over there? Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Oh, that was sketchy. Well, it looks bigger from the inside, but it is still only like one two, three chunks. It actually looks like a broken tooth from a distance. It's three pillars of a, a crumbling molar is uh, how I would describe Dunseverick Castle. Yeah, there's uh, some kind of hole in the ground here. I mean, that was the castle septic tank. But uh, leaving the septic tank behind and this is probably one of my favorite stretches of coastline sort of from Dunseverick on round towards the Giant's Causeway. Look at this. I mean, how epic is that view? 
And if you look, you can just about make out the, the tiny little white and orange shape of uh, Port Moon Bothy, this tiny little like fisherman's cottage right down on the coast. And that's where we're heading to next via the cliffs. This is one of the most stunningly beautiful stretches of coastline. And I've been along here several times, but I've never really properly appreciated it because it's part of the route of the, the Causeway Coast Half Marathon. So I've run along this two, three times, but I've never actually really spent much time hiking it or walking it slowly. Um, and the time that I was down at, at Port Moon, um, we hiked in a real hurry. So just trying to slow down a bit and take my time. You see things you wouldn't see otherwise. Just as a side note, if you ever come up somewhere like this and you want to fly a drone, just watch out this time of year because the gulls and seabirds are like starting to nest in the cliffs. And if you fly close to them with a the drone, you could potentially scare them off or some of the gulls might take it thick and attack the drone. I've seen drones been taken down by herring gulls before. So yeah, stay clear of the birds. Don't wind them up. It will not end well for you. I brought along with me this. This is the Sigma 100 to 400 telephoto lens for Sony, and I got the Sony A7S Mark III. I'm trying to force myself to shoot my like B-roll with longer focal lengths to try and have a bit more of a contrast of style. I love how telephoto lenses kind of compress the view. So you can get like multiple layers of an image just within one frame. And I think it actually gives you a better sense of being there sometimes than wide angle does. People always assume wide angle is better for landscapes and really it's not always the best option. That shape on the horizon there, you can see in the distance, that church, that's Ballantoy Church and it's just above Ballantoy Harbour, which, ah, stunning, another stunning location. I'm not gonna show it in this video, but I've got all my running gear with me. So after this, I'm heading to Ballantoy Harbour, getting changed, and I'm gonna go for a run along part of the cliffs that I'm not gonna show now, and it includes going through a cave. So if you wanna to get to see a little bit more of the coastline, you can go and check out that video. I'll link it down in the description as soon as it's up. But uh, let's get down to Port Moon. Okay, I had to stop again because, uh... wow. You know what? I actually think I've missed that view because the Causeway Coast Half Marathon runs in this direction so that's behind you so unless you turn around you're in the race i think i totally missed that view don't let the uh the little hedge at the side of this path lull you into a false sense of security because on the other side of that is a very steep long vertical drop followed by a very sudden and unpleasant sharp stop so um you do have to be careful up here. I mean, literally, I am 10 feet, 10 feet from a squashy demise. Do not mess with cliffs. Speaking of sticky demises and dangerous, <laughs> dangerous descents, you can just about see in the background there, the switchback down the, it's not quite a cliff, but it's pretty steep down to Port Moon. And our final destination, but not like in a, in a final destination, the movie series kind of way, because you know, that generally is a sticky demise. This is very dark. Let's just get down the cliff. Okay, I think this is the, the way down, but I've put my camera away because my memory of the last time I came down here was of falling over or nearly falling over several times. And I do not want to roll all the way to the bottom. This is quite steep. Ugh. There's a view you only get to see if you come down this way. The waterfall. Ow, ow, ow. You can't even tell it's the, ow, there from the other direction. These are spiky. I think I get the feeling this is designed, you know, not to encourage people to come down here.
been a long time since I've been down here. The last time I was down here, I was four years ago, camped out with Connor one night. Horrible experience. I'll not say any more about it now. I'll never record a sit with Steve where I'll talk about that more that'll, that'll layer in with us. But yeah, this is it. Port Moon used to be a really popular place for fishermen. There were really popular salmon fisheries around here. They pulled kelp seaweed from the sea that was processed. I think it was used for fertilizer on fields. It was crabs, lobsters, and then just like salmon stocks dwindled. And um, now the Port Moon Bothy is no longer used by fishermen. Instead, it's used by Northern Ireland's Canoeing Club and uh, the occasional people who are willing to scramble down a cliff for a night in the freezing cold because <laughs> it is not warm. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little walk along the cliffs. Well, it turned out to be a walk along the cliffs. It was supposed to be around a lot more places, but thanks to everywhere being closed, they come up here instead. Absolutely beautiful spot. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I'm shooting this with a Freewell anamorphic adapter for the Pocket 2, which is why you're getting a wider view. I thought it was quite appropriate for this cinematic ending. Yeah, I gotta do a sit with Steve where I sit here and ramble on for 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna do a run, which will sort of connect up with where I started. So you can connect the dots for a three-part series but I'm just gonna sit here, relax, and just soak it all in for a bit. We can all do with a little bit of this now.